Hi, welcome to BizJet TV. My name is Fabrizio Poli and today we're going to be talking about how much does it cost to fly by private jet? And we're going to be looking at four different options. The first option being chartering. The second option is fractional ownership. The third option is leasing. And the fourth option is ownership. So we'll look at these from, from a very different perspective. I think you will, will be quite surprised at the approach that uh, I'm going to be showing you. Um, and just to quote a great book written by uh, Wallace D. Wattles, The Science of Getting Rich. And one of the key things that Wallace D. Wattles says in this book is, you know, becoming, you know, generating wealth and becoming rich, it's not about what you do, okay? It's about doing things in a certain way. So the private jet needs to be approached in a certain way. Uh, whether you charter, whether you lease, whether you buy, whatever solution you may go for, uh, don't look at it from a linear perspective. Too many people come on calls with me with the CFO and they're looking at, you know, how much is it going to cost every day to run this thing, blah, 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 blah. But we've got to look at the opportunity. We've got to, you know, use this aeroplane in a certain way. And so first thing is select the right solution and then use it in a certain way. And that's what we're going to be covering today in this episode. So if you haven't subscribed to Business TV, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. All about business aviation. Give us a thumbs up and also comment below. We love to hear from you and love to hear your suggestions. So let's go and find out now how much it costs to operate and fly with the private jet. Off we go. So let's look at the four options for uh, private jet travel and look at the costs just to give you an idea of how this whole thing works. But I also want to explain to you what happens behind the scenes to give you a bit more understanding of how this whole charter situation works like. Now, um, in order to charter a private jet, you can either go online or there are these fancy apps out there which will select uh, a plane for you for the day that you need to fly and give you a quote. Now, the problem with charter is a lot of people that approach it, in particular for the first time, that are used to flying, you know, with the Delta Airlines, the Emirates, the British Airways of the world, or the EasyJets, or the Southwest Airlines, um, they always approach it from a perspective of price. And they think, well, let me see if I can get a good price on a flight from, I don't know, New York to Miami, for example, or, you know, London to Dubai, or wherever it may be. Um, and there are opportunities to buy what's called an empty leg. Now, most of the time, when you are chartering a, a private jet, you actually pay for round trip. Um, so what happens is if you're going to, from LA to your New York, for example, and LA to New York, um, if you're flying, let's say, take a Goldstream G200, for example. Okay, now, first of all, uh, when you're flying private, there are a lot more airports available. There's about 10, 10 times more airports. So you would have to pinpoint which airport you want to leave from and which airport you want to land at. Okay, so that's the first thing. Uh, so a Goldstream G200 for a flight like that, it's about four hour, 50 minutes, carries about eight people, $35,000 would be the roundabout price. But again, that will fluctuate and it depends on the day. So if you do call your local charter company or use a charter broker, uh, you need to be very specific. I need to leave on Tuesday at two o'clock in the afternoon and return on Wednesday at four o'clock, whatever, and there's five of us, you know, that kind of thing. So they can be very specific because the airplanes move about all the time and sometimes there's repositioning and all that kind of thing which plays into the price of the charter. But the, now, most of the charter brokers use a system called Avinode. Now, what Avino basically does is, let's say you own an aircraft and you want to charter it out when you're not using it. You would put some pretty pictures of the aircraft up on Avino. You put the availability, you'd put a, an indicative pricing. So the charter brokers will go into their system. They'll type in, I need, I've got a passengers to go from uh, LA to New York tomorrow, at two o'clock in the afternoon. And then it'll, there'll be like, I don't know, eight airplanes available to do that flight. And it will give you the pricing. What it doesn't do is it doesn't vet these companies. Um, and a lot of the charter broker situation is all about bribing the price down because what they're thinking is, is that in particular, the new people coming into the market, they're, they're thinking price, 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 because that's what they do when they book an airline flight. Uh, but you've got to be very careful about flight safety. Now, I, I've, I've said it a number of times on BizJet TV. You can check uh, a number of videos here that I've done on Flight Safety. Now, Flight Safety Foundation have looked at a number of accidents and they've come up with and discovered that, you know, that the um, safety record in private aviation is five times worse than the airlines. So it's very, very important that if you are using a local charter company or you're using a broker, that that broker vets the companies that they're using. So don't always go based off of price. And that doesn't mean that the most expensive is going to be the best. OK, but, you know, you need to use someone that you can trust. At Kaizen Aerospace, we do organize charters. 
and we do organize charters worldwide so you can contact us and we will find something for you uh, but you know I, I, I'm telling you right away we're not going to give you the cheapest price because we work with a, a very select few uh, companies that we trust that we know they do the pilot training and selection in a certain way um, and sometimes and very often that price is a lot higher than the lowest that's out there so you know you, you have to sort of take that into consideration so let's look at some numbers now so $35,000 is what it would cost you from like LA to New York if you're doing a flight like Miami London and we're using a bigger aircraft like maybe a Gulfstream G5 or a Global 6000 um, and that will cost you about $125,000 it's a 10 hour flight aircraft that can carry 10 to 12 passengers I don't recommend flying 12 passengers in a, a, a private jet on a 10 hour flight because it can get a bit claustrophobic all, all that all that time in, in, a, in, a, in a private jet you can go for the larger you know BBJ or ACJ which obviously is going to cost you a lot more uh, but usually you know when people charter private jets in my experience and the stats tell us there's three and a half passengers per flight uh, so it's basically three to four people um, and you know four people even six people um, six seven people uh, flying transatlantic fly very comfortably on a, on a G4SP or a global 6000 or a G550 whatever it may be um, and the price around about you know 125 to maybe 140 uh, for the flight and what will happen on a, on a flight that's that long the, the charter company will probably keep the airplane on the ground for a couple of days and then allow you to return uh, for, 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 all, for that all-in price um, what they don't do is they won't keep the airplane sitting around for a week but two to three days is usually something that they can do so that's pretty much uh, the pricing um, on these aircraft for charter and of course the advantage of charter is you know when you need to fly you just pick the phone up pay for that flight so if you're going to be flying I don't know four or five times a year charter is certainly the way to go uh, you wouldn't want to go into any of the other options I'm about to explain to you now let's look at fractional ownership now what does fractional ownership mean fractional ownership means you buy a percentage of an aeroplane and you pay for that okay you own a quarter of an aeroplane or a sixth or or a tenth or a half or whatever it may be um, and then you on top of that you pay uh, some fixed costs and then some, some, some operating costs and that's how that works and we know you know the net jets of the world the flex jets they've been around for a long time they offer fraction ownership options on a number of different aircraft and let's just look at an example uh, on a Challenger 350 which is a nice 3,000 mile um, airplane uh, a 6.25 percent uh, of a share will cost you about 1.27 million dollars now you own that okay now obviously that that value that that price will depreciate over time because airplanes are depreciating assets um, it's going to cost you about four hundred thousand dollars a year um, and you know translates into about eight thousand one hundred dollars an hour for 50 hours a year now the advantage of using somebody like NetJets or FlexJet is that they have a large fleet of aircraft and it's like um, consultancy call I did a few weeks ago with a client um, and he was you know looking to flying about 50 hours a year um, and so we were looking at the option of either chartering doing a charter deal with a jet card or something like that or fractional ownership but because he needed the aircraft in Europe and his son uh, needed uh, to do some flying in the United States a solution like that of fractional ownership made sense because on the same day the father could use an aeroplane in Europe while the son was flying on another aeroplane in it but they were using the same share so that was the solution for that client um, and of course you know you have to buy into them and you know most of these fracture ownership companies work well they do maintain well good maintenance the pilots are trained well so it is definitely a solution it's obviously pricier than charter um, disadvantage would be you get different crew all the time so the service isn't as personalized as you would get in a lease or in, a, in, in, in having your own aircraft which is the next two options we're going to look at now let's look at option three which is leasing a private jet now when I say leasing I mean short-term leasing anywhere from three months to 36 months um, now you can sort of lease aircraft from banks or do a finance deal with a bank where, where you know you'll pay for the aircraft over seven years and you can you know a bit like buying a car you can either pay a, the balloon payment at the end of the lease and own it outright or you can just walk away uh, what we do here at Kaizen Aerospace is we offer these operational leases anywhere between three to 36 months now the benefit the, the big benefit of this is it's just like having your own aircraft because the aircraft sits at your local airport it's available 24 7 with crew and everything if you want your logo uh, on the airplane for the term of the lease we can arrange that as well uh, now what would it cost now on a global 6000 you're obviously paying for the aircraft you've got the crew the maintenance and the insurance which are 
a fixed cost and then we've got the operational side of things like fuel and landing fees and catering uh, and that will differ uh, depending on where we're going. But all in, I mean, you're paying about $3 million to lease the actual aircraft and then on top of that you've got all the other costs which round up at about 11000 to eleven and a half thousand dollars an hour. So all in, we're talking about five to five and a half million dollars uh, plus the lease. So we're talking, let's call it eight, nine million dollars a year. Uh, and one would say, oh, that's that's a lot of money. Yes, but you haven't spent, you know, twenty-five to thirty million dollars to buy the aircraft. And and even if you do, you're still going to spend like five to five and a half million dollars to do the four hundred and eighty hours a year, which is what we recommend if you're going into this kind of of lease. Um, you know, to justify also deploying the aircraft, you need to be doing at least 40 hours a month. Um, and we actually ask for that, a guarantee of 40 hours a month on, on a larger aircraft like the Global 6000. Because, you know, we have to hire crew, we have to train them and everything. So, you know, we, we have to have all, all those numbers in place. Um, obviously, on a lease, there will be a deposit, which initiates it. But, you know, the lease agreements that we have are only three pages. We don't ask too many questions. It's quick. It can be executed within three to four weeks. Uh, you can take delivery of the aircraft um, so it is a solution which you know more and more people are looking at uh, and, and the big benefit as I always say you know you have the airplane available 24 7 it's like you own your own your own aircraft the next option obviously is purchase um, and purchasing an aircraft is is a good solution for certain people uh, of course if you are living in the United States and your company is based there uh, the US government is very pro private jets so there's a lot of tax offsets that you can do with acquisition of the aircraft and, and, and the whole cost of running it uh, and you may have heard me talk often and uh, I've talked to Grant Cardone about how he acquired his Goldstream G550 and 50 million dollars it cost him and how he did the deal and how it was a tax write-off and all that kind of thing and you can click on the video above to go and look at that but you know purchasing can certainly be um, uh, a good solution for you in particular if you can offset the tax and having your own aircraft some people like to buy brand new from the manufacturer because manufacturers when they sell you a new aircraft usually for five years you get all the maintenance and pilot training and everything included um, obviously you've got to negotiate your way you know whether you're talking to Gulfstream or Embraer or, or Bombardier or whoever you, you may be talking to you, you can you can go for that solution uh, uh, but you know sometimes a pre uh, owned aircraft is is a, is a good uh, where you've got most of the depreciation that's gone but you have to have a good engine program a good maintenance program but, you know with acquiring an aircraft in particular if you are a first-time buyer it is always very important to have uh, a professional to guide you through the process I mean you're not buying a house here you're not buying a car you're buying something that's got you know this aluminium tube or metal tube that goes up to 45,000 feet with you in it uh, you want to make sure that you are buying the right aircraft I mean when I do consultancy calls there's always a series of questions I send out to the clients uh, ahead of the call uh, just to get them thinking in a certain way because sometimes people come to us over here at Kaizen Aerospace and they've got this idea in their head of a certain type of air oh I want to buy a Goldstream G5 and then when you start talking to them you realize that maybe a Falcon 7X is the best solution for them um, and you know and we don't you know uh, favor one aircraft over another we try uh, uh, we look at the, the clients needs and, and we very much you know our philosophy is we are a team together with you we want to make sure that you know you get an airplane that's going to you know make you money at the end of the day it's a tool um, and we need to make sure that you're, you're getting the, the, the aircraft that's going to fit your type of operation uh, and do the job in the, in the best possible way for you and make you do those deals so yes the numbers are important uh, but you know if you're somebody where you know look is really important you need to have a super fancy interior or you need an airplane that looks a certain shape um, then you know we'd, we'd go for one type uh, compared to somebody that just really needs like a workhorse to go from A to B um, so it, it very is very much is you know looking at your needs and figuring it out so it's always my advice to speak to a professional whether you speak to, to me and, and my team at Kaizen Aerospace or somebody else that's really uh, up to you but you know, I really do recommend doing that because there's also pre buy inspection needs to be done in a certain way the legal uh, side needs to be done a certain way and you need a, a lawyer that understands aviation that's done aircraft transactions not just your, your lawyer that you're using for your business that won't work it's a bit like saying well I'm gonna go I, I really like my dentist I think he's really good I think I'll let him operate uh, perform heart surgery on me uh, no the, the dentist is a doctor like the heart surgeon is a doctor but you wouldn't go to the heart surgeon to have a filling done or, or a new bridge and you wouldn't go to your dentist to have 
a heart transplant. So it's the same with with uh, with with aircraft and and, uh, and with, with lawyers and that. So that's really it. I mean, how much is it going to cost you to have your own aircraft? Well, obviously you're going to have to buy the airplane. So that process is going to cost you. It's going to cost you probably about two, just two percent or just under two percent for to, to have a good consultant uh, on. On manage the whole process for you but you know a good consultant will save you money they'll pinpoint the right airplane and, and you know and there's a lot of deals out there that are done off market now I'm not saying that off market you're gonna find a better deal than the ones on market but there's a lot more to choose from and and anybody that's in the industry that does this for a living like we do here at Kaizen Aerospace we are dialed in to the the off market uh, solutions that are out there as well as those that are on market which you can easily find by just doing a Google search so and it's also important to understand what aircraft are going for and the market fluctuates all the time um, and you need somebody that knows what things are going for you can't just go and control and say oh I see there's a couple of these airplanes uh, for sale at 15 million uh, when you know last transactions have all gone for 12 and a half but you know you're not going to see that on the internet you will you will find out if you're talking to people that are actually in the business and do that I mean we collaborate with a number of other uh, private jet aviation companies and we always know what's selling what isn't selling and what numbers things are actually going for not asking prices actual transactions that have closed and so it's important to, to see that and then you've got to look at the maintenance and you know, what's coming up what isn't coming up and what work does it require on the aircraft you say oh I can get this airplane for 10 million dollars and then you don't in three months time you've got to spend two and a half million on, on some maintenance event uh, so again, uh, having a professional guide you through the process is really important. So once you acquire the aircraft, you've got all the legals and the pre-buy and all that to pay for. You then have to hire pilots. And this is where a management company uh, comes into play um, because they will know, you know good pilots out there that they can hire and do all that for you. And so you won't have the headache of you know having to do all that. And again, Kaizen Aerospace, we offer that service as well. Um, so you know, these are all things that you, you have to consider. Um, and of course, when you have an airplane and you own it and, you know, like has happened in lockdown, a lot of people have had their airplane sitting in the hangar. They couldn't really go anywhere and they're still paying for the hangar. They're still paying for the insurance. They're still paying for the pilots. Um, but, you know, over the last two or three months, maybe they haven't been anywhere with their aircraft. Um, you know, and these are fixed costs that you have when you own an aircraft or when you charter, you don't have those costs. You only pay when you fly. Um, so it really depends on your circumstance, whether you're going to charter, you're going to do fraction ownership, at lease, or you're going to purchase. But those four options are out there. Um, and again, um, I invite you, if you want to do a call, you can ping us a message at Kaizen Aerospace. We'll be happy to get on a call with you and um, talk you through and find out more about your business and you know what your goals are uh, and come up with the best solution for you and then take it from there. But certainly I, I do see more and more people turning to private jet travel. So the, th the next thing you need to ask yourself is, okay, well maybe we'll continue flying with the airlines. Well, what about the competition? Is the competition gonna start flying private? And if they do, they're gonna get to places quicker than you um, and they're gonna end up doing more deals. So if you're certainly in, in that category of, you know, people worth over $30 million or your company's upcoming, maybe you're not quite, worth 30 million yet but you know you do really need to move your people around to do meetings and the private jet can do that or well, maybe chartering is a good way to start and then going into fraction ownership or a lease uh, before you purchase and you can sort of grow with the process but certainly having a private jet as a business tool is certainly something more and more people are looking into now after this whole lockdown this whole virus thing because it is safer to fly private you know in the sense that if you control the airplane your pilots are well trained um, they're paid well, you've got good people, they're flying you around, they disinfect the aircraft, they have, they, they've been tested. Um, the people that are on the aircraft are, you know, your team, you know who they are, you're not sitting next to somebody that's sneezing or you've got somebody 20 rows behind you that's sneezing and then that sneeze is being recirculated throughout the cabin and before you know it, you get home, you feel sick. Uh, I mean, how many times have people travel? This may have happened to you as well, but after, you know, especially long flights, a couple of days later you come down with the flu or some other bug, I mean, that's happened to a lot of people. And I think, you know, this whole lockdown thing has created that kind of awareness that, you know, flying on an airline with other 250 people, it's not the healthiest of things. Um, and so, if, you know, building your immune system is key. You may want to check this video I did with uh, Marcus Rothkranz, which talks about immune system. Um, I know there's lots of talks of vaccinations and, and that these days, but, you know, it, it really is, the, the virus has killed people. 
and it mainly has killed people that had weak immune systems. So one of the things you need to do is build a strong immune system and Marcus shares some interesting insight into that. But that's really all from me here on this episode of BizJet TV. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, I encourage you to subscribe to BizJet TV and uh, give us a thumbs up and comment below. We'd love to hear your comments and suggestions for any future videos. And that's all from Fabrizio Party on BizJet TV and I'll see you on the next one.